Hey guys, welcome to your fourth video in the C-sharp linked list tutorial. In this video, we are going to start the implementation of the methods in our linked list class. For this video specifically, we will implement the two add methods. Let's get started. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the two parameter add method. Now, you will see later on that we can just use that implementation as our other add method. Now what we're going to do is return the object that is added as well as put it into the list. So our method signature would be public object add and it's going to take an int index and an object and we're going to call that O. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the index that they pass in is within our list. So what if you have an array and you want to get the negative one index. No, that'll throw an error. So what we want to do is make sure it's above zero. So if index is less than zero, what we want to do is throw a new argument out of range exception and we'll just say index plus index. And what this will do is throw an error because hey, you can't give us a negative one index because there is no negative one index. And this next part is my implementation of it. This is if the user asks for an index that is bigger than the amount of items in the list, it will just set the index to the last item in the list. So it is if index is greater than the size, which is how many items are in the list currently, we'll set index to size. Now what I'm going to do to avoid some confusion later on size and we have the count I'm gonna rename this to count that'll clear up any confusion with size and count alright so the next thing we need to do is get the first node in the list so node and we'll just call this current equals this dot head so what this does is get the first node in the list and that is the head node. There are two cases for this add method. The first one is if the list is empty or we're adding to the beginning, we're going to want to do something different than if we're adding somewhere else in the list. So that'll set us up for an if else statement. So the if statement is if, now this is where these properties come in handy, this empty, if, so if this is empty or the index is zero, which means that we want to put it in the beginning of the list. We'll fill in that body later and we'll make just the else statement right there. So that is if it's not empty and the index is greater than zero. For this one, all we're going to do is set the head node equal to a new node and we give it the object is O that we pass it and we're setting it to this.head. The reason why we set it to this.head Remember the constructor for a new node takes the next node in the list. Well, if the node is empty, that'll the head will be null. So it doesn't point to a next one. And if it's not empty, it's basically inserting it right before. So say we have the list of A going to B, going to C, and we want to add D at the beginning of the list. What it does is it sets the first value to the new node, which will have the D reference, and it will set the pointer, the reference, to the head, which is already A. So that's basically what it does right there. Now the else, this is a little bit more complicated, but we're going to make a for loop, and we're going to loop to the node right before the one we want to insert it into. So that means, hey, we're going to do a for loop for int i equals zero. Now it's going to be i is less than index minus one because we are going for the one right before the, the index that we want to insert it. And what we're going to do is just set the current node equal to the current node dot next, which just basically moves the node to the next one. And now all we need to do now that loops to the one right before it, all we're going to do is set the current.next 
equal to a new node with the object data, so O, and current dot next as its next node. So that might be a little confusing. I'll go over that. So if we go back to this little thing, A goes to B, goes to C, goes to D. And we want to insert, let's see here, zeroth element, first, second, third, and fourth. We want to insert it at two. So what this is going to do is we're going to want to insert it right there. The for loop, the current one is currently selected as the node, head node. The for loop will take that and loop to index minus one. Index would be two, so index minus one is one. It'll grab this node right there, and that'll be equal to current. So it's going to set the next node of B, of the current one, to a new node that holds O. So that'll be E. And then the current dot next is the next node of the new node. So current dot next, the B is current, the next is already to C. So that means it sets it right there. And that's how it inserts it in. Then all that's left to do is we need to increment the count so that we know how many new objects are in there. And then all we do is return the object that we inserted. And the add method is complete. Now I can show you what I mean by how we can use that implementation to do the other add method. So the other add method is public object add and just takes the object. Now what we're going to do, we said we were going to add this to the end of the list. All we need to do here is return this dot add and for the overload, the index, we're just going to add it to count because that is one more than the list, so it'll put it in that position as a new one at the end, and then we pass it the object O. Now we have completed two add methods, we're going to test this in our program method. I've already created a new linked list right here. We'll say list dot add test one. List dot add test two. And then we'll want to do list dot add and we'll put it in index one and we'll go test three. So this should make a list. Oh, that needs to be lowercase. That has list one, list three, and then list two because of the we're inserting this into the first index, which is really the second one. So if we test this, I will put a debugger right there, and I'll be able to show you what it looks like after every step. So right now the list is empty. The head is equal to null. After we execute this line of code, the list will have count of 1, and the head node points to test 1. That is right. After we execute the next line of code, it should have added that new node, so head is still test 1, and its next one is test 2. Now this is where it, the next line of code adds in between them. So if we execute that line of code, this should be count as 3, test 1, test 3, test 2. Just like that. Our add methods work. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more, and I will see you in the next tutorial where we will implement the remove method.